Computer Science 461, Process Improvement. Uh, today we'll get around to introducing the Capability Maturity Model, but we'll talk about the area of process improvement in general uh, before doing that. So let's start with, well, what is process improvement? And basically it means understanding existing processes and changing these to increase product quality and or reduce costs and development time. So like products, processes have characteristics. They have understandability, visibility, supportability, reliability, robustness, maintainability, and rapidity. In terms of visibility, it's pretty difficult here at UH to get a list of all the organizational processes for UH Hilo. And in 2009, I actually started documenting the ones that relate to the chair position for the computer science department. Uh, in terms of general university policies, under understandability is also lacking in almost all of the uh, system-wide processes. So, you know, there are some areas uh, where we can improve as an organization as well. In terms of limitations for process improvement, it's impossible to improve everything all at once. You can't do this big bang. And you also can't just template a process improvement technique. The technique needs to be tailored for your organization. So, for example, it makes no sense to grab something like ABET accreditation process from UCLA and carte blanche implement here. You have to tailor it custom for your organization. So if we were going for ABET accreditation at UH Hilo, we would want to have a process that fit our own custom needs and not tailor it based on one that we uh, found at another university. So three stages for process improvement. One is measurement, determine what the process is doing, how well it's doing it, analyze, is it actually achieving what we want it to achieve, and then change it so that it actually does. Uh, this uh, should look familiar and it should look like Deming's wheel to a certain extent that we talked about in the uh, quality lecture. Process and product quality. So again, what we're going for with process improvement is increase in product quality. And the critical assumption with this is that product quality is based on the process quality. And if you don't believe bullet point one, then all bets are uh, really off. Uh, early work in this area includes uh, Deming, who espoused total quality management, or something close to it. There's some uh, debate there. And the use of statistical controls to measure quality of process and product. Remember that software development though is not the same as manufacturing because software in some ways is intangible and it is a very creative process. Four uh, product quality factors, people, process, technology, and process metrics. This illustration is taken from Somerville and which of the four factors is most important differs on the organization, the context, and the situation. Of course, uh, process project metrics are always important uh, to have, but uh, the other three can certainly be um, important. So let's look at four classes of process so we can learn to classify the different processes that we might uh, be using in an organization. Uh, generically, there are four classes. Um, informal, there's no strictly defined model, but you may have some formal procedures. Managed process, you have a defined process model that defines procedures, schedules, and relationships between the procedures. Methodological process, these are systemic methods with the support of case tools. Uh, for example, the rational unified process and tools. And improving processes. Uh, these are processes that have inherent improvement uh, objectives. So where is each generic type applicable? Well, informal processes are great for prototypes, short uh, lifetime systems, um, fourth generation language business systems, you know, things that you snap together with um, Excel and some visual basic tools, small to medium sized systems. And these are like agile methods. They work well for the type of items in indicated prototypes and in small systems, uh, but they may not scale to large systems or long lifetime products. And methodological processes are for well understood application domains and re-engineered systems. So how do you measure these? Uh, well, measure once, cut twice, or something like this. But really, process measurement lets us know if our process is working. 
So measurement and feedback are critical for process improvement. You need to take time to collect the process metrics and some of the process metrics you can collect are the time taken for a particular process to be completed. So for example, how long does it take to get uh, travel approval done in the UH system? Resources required, uh, so how many pieces of paper, uh, how much uh, time, how many different people need to touch this. And the other one is the number of occurrences of an event is something you can collect for a process. So number of defects uh, discovered during code inspections. An interesting take on this is the U.S. government's Paperwork Reduction Act. And you can find that at the federal government archives. And basically this uh, Paperwork Reduction Act gives specific amounts of time required to fill out forms and gather data for very various federal processes. Another approach to project management and process, process improvement is the GQM approach to project management. Here in GQM we identify the three things, the goals, questions, and the metrics. And so GQM really specializes in separating organizational goals from the product, that is the uh, questions. And so this is one approach to process measurement. Somerville points out that this can be used with the capability maturity model, but of course he hasn't defined the capability maturity model at that point. We're going to get to that uh, fairly shortly. Now let's look at how to analyze and improve uh, pro and monitor processes. So process analysis and monitoring involves the study of existing processes and developing an abstract model for these processes that captures the key characteristics. You analyze in order to understand the parts of the process being used and begin with the formal process that's being used, then supplement it based on questionnaires, interviews, ethnography. So all models are simplified processes in themselves. And again, this is really more of an art than a science. I generally agree with Summerville's assertion that ethnography is the best approach. I worked as a process analyst for several years with several different clients. And what I found is you never really understood the process until you spent a day or two sitting down with the person who was actually performing the work. Uh, for example, talking about the impound of failed evaluated receipts in the abstract is quite confusing until you actually spend a day or two on the receiving deck and realize what a pain it can be to sort things out between purchasing, ordering, and the supplier. It's easier to throw it into impound and send an electronic message to the supplier who will be motivated to sort it out in order to get paid more rather than you trying to sort it out yourself. So that would be you know, an example of why you have a particular process in place. And is there anything you can do to improve it? Well, that's uh, an analysis question. So elements of a process model. And uh, Somerville has um, some figures in the uh, chapter that uh, show process model. And there are different other ways to represent process models. Uh, I used one developed by a company called Performa when I was doing this professionally. So what you need to show in a process model, the activity, process, deliverable, basically the tangible outputs of an activity, and the condition. So you can have either a precondition or a postcondition for a process. You also need to show the role. Um, in Somerville's it's shown as a circle with a drop shadow, although I typically used uh, stick figures. Uh, exceptions, uh, these may not be shown in the examples, um, but uh, you can represent them as a double-edged box and communication which is uh, shown as an arrow in some of those. Processes are not stagnant and they do change when an organization undergoes change. So process change involves making modifications to existing processes. It can be done by introducing new tools, changing the order of activities, or removing deliverables. You need to set goals for your process improvement. And those are based on the things that you can measure. So five stages, improvement identification, improvement prioritization, process change introduction, change training, so training people on what the process change actually was, and then fine tuning it to make sure that it actually works. Uh, it is actually very impractical to introduce too many changes at one time. And regarding the last point, I sure that some of you have had managers or co-workers who try to change everything at once. Uh, to quote Henry Rollins, we tried that once and in our opinion it didn't work. The other point in this section um, that Somerville discusses uh, brings up Hammer and Champy who wrote a book called Reengineering the Corporation and Somerville kind of points 
kind of uh, contends that they have the wrong idea about re-engineering, which is radical process change. And while I think Somerville's uh, points may be true to some extent, uh, Hammer and Champy also have a number of good points about how organizations are dysfunctional and how divisions often do what is optimal for themselves as opposed to the company as a whole. So Hammer and Champy is, is definitely uh, worth a read if you have some uh, time and you want to uh, read a uh, good business text. So finally we get to the capability maturity model, the integration version, which is CMMI. So CMM, Capability Maturity Model, was developed by the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon. And the Software Engineering Institute was established in the 1980s to improve the capabilities of the U.S. software industry. CMMI provides a framework for process improvements and has a wide variety of application areas. Uh, there are also some spin-offs, for example, People CMM, PCMM, SPICE, which is a competitive approach to CMMI, Bootstrap, which extends uh, the capability maturity model to make it fit other areas of the company besides uh, software development. And CMMI is the integrated model, of course. So what does this actually involve? Well, the base document is over a thousand pages. Now, I know you've already found it at SEI's website and read it, but I'm going to mention the highlights anyway. So there are three main components to the capability maturity model. One are the process areas. There are 24 of these. These are areas relevant to process capability improvement. Second are goals. These are abstract descriptions of a desirable state that should be attained by an organization and practices, which are ways of achieving a goal. So here are those 24 different process areas. This slide is taken from uh, Somerville, so it's a bit difficult to read. If you want a better view of it, um, I suggest uh, looking in the uh, textbook. Or you can also go to the uh, Software Engineering Institute website and take a look at them there. Uh, and they'll have more details on them as well. So CMMI assessment examines processes used in an organization, assesses their maturity in each process area. And they use a six-point scale going from zero not performed to five optimizing. So zero is a new one that's introduced in CMMI, but let's look at the uh, classic five-stage model. Level 1 is initial, level 2 is managed, level 3 is defined, level 4 is quantitatively managed, and level 5 is optimizing. Let's take a look at the details. Uh, level 1, uh, this one will seem familiar to you. The company has no standard process for software development, nor does it have a project tracking system that enables developers to predict costs or finish dates with any level of accuracy. Level 2 company has basic software management processes and controls, but there's no consistency or coordination among different groups. Level 3, the company has pulled together a standard set of processes and controls for the entire organization, so developers can move between projects more easily and customers begin to get consistent results from different groups. Level 4, in addition to implementing standard processes, the company has installed systems to measure the quality of those processes across all projects. And level five, the company has accomplished all of the above and can now begin to see patterns in performance over time. So it can tweak its processes in order to improve productivity and reduce defects in software development across the entire organization. So that begs the question, are there negative levels? Uh, yes, there are, and this is um, back from our buddies at Wikipedia when they used to have a sense of humor. I think they uh, took this out, but it was great. Uh, zero is negligent. The organization pays lip service, often with excessive fanfare and implementing software engineering processes, but lacks the will to carry through the necessary effort. Whereas CMM Level 1 assumes eventual success in producing software, CMM Zero generally fail to produce any product or do so by abandoning regular procedures in favor of crash programs. Obstructive uh, processes, however inappropriate and ineffective, are implemented with rigor and tend to obstruct work. Adherence to process is the measure of success in a level minus one organization. Any actual creation of viable product is incidental. The quality of any product is not assessed, presumably on the assumption that if the proper process is followed, high quality is guaranteed. Paradoxically, level minus one organizations believe fervently in following defined procedures, but lack the will to measure the effectiveness of the procedures they rarely succeed at their basic task of creating software. Minus two, contemptuous. While processes exist, they are routinely ignored by engineering staff and those charged with overseeing the process with regard to hostility, 
um, are, and are regarded with hostility. Measurements are fudged to make the organization look good. Not a good environment to work in or be associated with. And minus three, undermining sabotage. Not content with faking their own performance, undermining organizations routinely work to downplay and sabotage the efforts of rival organizations, especially those successfully implementing processes common to CMM level two and higher. This is where the this is worse where company policy causes department to compete for scarce resources, which are allocated to the loudest advocates. Uh, you may recognize your organization in there. And continuous CMM, continuous capability and maturity model, you rate each process area on a one through five scale rather than the entire organization, and then you can select which areas to improve. So a couple of discussion questions and things to think about as you um, go away from this uh, lecture. Uh, does CMM necessarily result in higher quality software? Uh, some people say yes, uh, some people no, they say no. There's an excellent article mentioned in the syllabus called Bursting the CMM Hype, and it's a really good read uh, when it comes to uh, CMM not delivering on everything it promises. Basically, it starts out with um, the uh, person attempting to buy CMM level 5 from the auditor, and it goes downhill from there. So. What should a CIO look for when evaluating a company's CMM, CMMI capabilities? I think it's uh, just one measure of the uh, company, and you probably shouldn't just go with a company just because they have slapped uh, CMM level 5 or paid for the uh, certification, but it is an indication as to the uh, quality. So next time we'll take a look at Magic Bullets and uh, Peter King.